Hi, here we have the VetSense-P02 veterinary monitor. Here we have a rubber cover for it, uh, one of the accessories. So the, the monitor just goes in there and slides in like that. And here we have a metal stand. So the metal stand has a suction cup on it and four feet, and it sticks down onto any metal operating table, and there's no way that'll come off. Okay, so we can put the pulse oximeter in like that, and we press the on-off button to turn it on. And it comes up VetSense, the software version, the time and date, and here we go, here's a menu here. So we've got the alarms, press the right arrow. We've got the pulse sound, the brightness. You can save battery power by turning down the brightness a bit. Uh, record ID, and here's a clock. So if you want to change the clock, you press yes, and then you can change the year. So, menu. And most important, the mute button, is that button there. And now I'll connect up my finger, and there it is. It's picked up the pulse waveform straight away. And there's the oxygen saturation, 96 on the left, and there's the heart rate, 75. So I can connect it to my ear. There it is. So it takes a while to pick up sometimes. And there's the oxygen saturation in my heart rate. Okay, so now we've got a little USB connector. So this comes uh, with the kit along with a mini CD. And now we can run SPO2 Assistant, which is a little program which comes with it. This is the program on the CD. So we click connect, connect. Okay, so it's searching for a pulse now. There's a pulse waveform. And there's my oxygen saturation 98 and the heart rate 69. So you can do all sorts of things here, do reports. This is a trend up here. You can change the time frame. You can freeze a waveform. You can unfreeze it. And uh, yeah, it's really good. Okay. So I'll just close that program. Okay, now if you want to see what a uh, VetSense-P02 looks like after a year of use in the field, here's one here. This has been used quite heavily, as you can see. The on-off button's worn out a bit, but it still works very well. And here's the mute button that's sort of worn out a little bit as well. But this will do for another maybe one, two, three, maybe five years, maybe even ten years. Okay, and if you want to know what's, what it's like, how it's built, here's one we've taken apart before. So I'll just take the front cover off. And uh, you can see the plastic moulding has these very nice little uh, switch covers here. So if you press it, you can see they flex quite well. So you can see that that actually protects the switch, so the switch is going to last a long time. With that pulse oximeter, which was a year old, we could actually renew that by just taking the label off, and we're going to ask the manufacturer if we could have some spare labels for that purpose. Okay, so here's the circuit board here. I'll just mute that again. So here we've got the microprocessor. Here are all the switches. You can see the switches have these uh, rubber carbon tops, uh, so they're quite nice. Um, there's a whole stack of circuitry there. And then on the back side, here's the battery contacts. This is a little battery which holds the, uh, the clock in. Uh, there's a little beaker which we've taken out. This beaker was a little bit soft. Um, there's a little USB connector. And most importantly, you can see this connector here. So if you have a look at the connector, you can see how it's soldered on. It's got really nice solder contacts there, and it's very well soldered on to the case. So it's very unlikely you're going to have any problems with that connector, which is where most of the problems happen. Um, so that's that, the VetSense-P02. Oh, some of the other problems we've had, this connector can sometimes get jammed in. There's a little key there. I don't know if you can see the key. The key's just here. I'll just point to it. Um, so that aligns with the connector here. So, And we did have a problem where that was 
the connector was pushed in slightly out of alignment and it got jammed in there. It's just a matter of pulling that out and that pulse oximeter is now back in use. And another problem we had was this little connector and screws. You can take this out and there's a little key just here. I don't know if you can see that. And that lines up with the inside part of the connector. So we had a problem where this had fallen apart and it was put back together incorrectly and the red light didn't come on. So if the red light doesn't come on on the finger probe, that can be tightened up quite nicely, then you could try that. You can see there's a red light there. That's it. Thanks.